Good morning. I'm Tim Welsh from Seed Asia Company. We're a, a small seed company uh, based here in Thailand. Just a quick little bit of background. I grew up in Iowa on a corn farm, of course, and found myself in the corn business here in Thailand, which 26 years later I never would have expected, but it's a long story. I'll tell you more later. Um, I was asked to speak today about um, some of the lessons in scaling up that we've had in our business um, and specifically talking on hybrid corn and commercializing that, um, which is our, the main part of our business. And we focus on tropical hybrid corn, not so much in temperate um, and other types. Just a couple of quick comments. Julie asked me to talk about the corn seed business in general, and then I'll get to more of the, the details on some of our scaling up experience more related to our seed production. Um, probably you all know rising populations and, and incomes here, it's driving more demand for meat, uh, feed, corn, and that's driving our seed business. Uh, a lot of this is driven by China. Um, you can see all the numbers out there in the press and everything, but it's really uh, hard to understate how much of an impact this is having on this whole region here in Southeast Asia and across the whole, not only Asia, but in, even in Africa. Um, in general, in the corn seed side, um, we're seeing a lot more awareness of farmers, by farmers, even the smallest of farmers back in the middle of nowhere about quality seed and they're willing to pay for it. Um, there's a lot more hybrids being offered by a lot more companies um, and farmers are really gaining from this. They're, it's really competitive. Um, the key things that we're seeing the demand for and the companies are breeding for, not only because of the market, because of climate change and social change and everything, it's drought tolerance, uh, better grain quality, uh, disease resistance, especially leaf blights and stalk rots, and better lodging resistance or plants that can stand up. Um, look at the typhoons that are coming through and all this type of thing. This is really an important thing. In spite of that, we're still seeing a lot of uh, pirated seed. We call it ghost seed. Um, a lot of this, and this is an area where we need your help. We don't have enough good plant variety protection laws and some of the, the enabling environment to support uh, better plant variety protection uh, and intellectual property here in the region. And then we're seeing a lot more mechanization as the labor costs go up. And some of this is very relative, but um, it's a really key driver, and that's an area where I'm going to go into more relating to planters. Um, so our company, Seed Asia, our motto is quality seed for growing value. Um, we're, we're basically a small version of like a Syngenta or a Monsanto. We started here in Thailand, and we're, we're gradually working out across the region. Um, we, we can't do our business unless the farmers make money. You can see a lot more about our company on our website, but um, basically we take a very development perspective in our business because we have to, and that's what we like to do. So in that respect, we're not very much different from, from you folks. Um, we're a private company. We started in 2005. We're based here, and this is our, our home, but we called our company Seed Asia because we knew we had to go regional. And uh, we're currently exporting to about seven countries, and we'll probably have a couple more this coming year. Um, Richard's comment earlier this morning, it's, it's, uh, it's not about money, it's about impact. For us, as a private company, it's about money and impact. We need both. Um, we have partners, we have shareholders, um, they want a return, but also um, we have employees and we have customers, both small farmers and dealers who we sell to, who then sell on to those small farmers. Um, the communities where they all work, the countries where we're working in, um, they go together, they're joined at the hip. Um, and for us, scaling up is equals growth. Um, if we don't grow, we don't survive. Basically, a seed company, a hybrid seed company in the corn seed sector, if you're not doing a thousand tons and you're running your own breeding program, you're not stealing somebody else's genetics, you need about a thousand tons of sales a year to make money. And that's just to break even. So you got to keep growing. And then we have our good friends at Syngenta and Monsanto, um, all the good researchers who are just moving ahead at light speed with molecular markers and all this research and stuff. It's all great stuff, but for a private company, a small private company, um, we have to grow with them 
and find a way to partner and, and grow like a big company, but do it at our own scale in our own way. So driving up, dri scaling up really drives change through every one of our departments. And we're, as I said, we're sort of like one of these bigger companies. We're doing our own sales and marketing, our seed production, processing QA, R&D, and, and our you know, admin and finance goes with it all. So seed production is the area I wanted to focus on because in terms of the scaling up exercise, I could talk about just pick, I could pick an example from any one of those departments and talk about how we've scaled up and it may or may not be interesting. But, um, but this picture, I don't know if you know much about hybrid corn seed production, but um, the male rows are the ones with the, the yellow tassels, the female lines are the ones in the middle. Um, so the dirty little secret about our business is we're not in the seed business, we're in the corn sex business. If you, you know, you have to understand corn sex. And that's the basics here. Um, some of the trends back on seed production in general, um, and maybe Aruna and our Syngenta friends, others could talk about this. Um, farmers are really savvy about the, the technical aspects that they want. Um, but they still need a lot of support in getting this stuff going. Um, in the input side, it relates to fertilizer, micronutrients, pest control, all these things. Um, definitely, they want more mechanization. Uh, their costs are going up just as our costs are going up. A lot of our farmers can't even get enough labor to do harvesting or planting operations anymore. Whereas just a few years ago, there was all sorts of, of abundant labor in these villages. And, People are moving off to the cities to do jobs or they're going into higher paying jobs in the villages. Um, and a lot of improvements still need to be done. We need a lot more work on soil testing, um, just better quality inputs and, and just a lot more on training. So in our own seed production, for this year we're, we're contracting with about 1,500 families here in Thailand, uh, mostly in the dry season for quality reasons and a little bit in the wet season. Our average contracted area is about 0.6 hectares. Some of it goes up to a couple of hectares or three, a uh, couple of our biggest, but most of them, the average is around here. Um, the value of the inputs that we provide, the parent seed, the fertilizer, and the pest control, uh, it's around $900 for an average family. Some of them are a lot bigger. The gross income is around $3,000 per, per family per crop. Um, and we work through a pretty classical type of uh, contract farming system where we have village group leaders, our own teams of field production, and then a layer of QA inspection people working with them and checking what they're doing and also supporting a lot with the uh, admin and, and uh, financial side. Probably the biggest challenge that we have in seed production here in, in Thailand, and I think it's true in just about all of the countries of this region, is that you're dealing with small-scale farmers. I tell some of our colleagues in the seed business that we're dealing with 1,500 farmers and they're 0.6 hectares. We tell people in the U.S. that, and they just, their eyes go back in their heads. You know, they can deal with the same amount of area with maybe a, a dozen farmers. And, you know, but when I tell them about some of our, our yields and, and, you know, the output that we're getting, they're like, hmm, okay, that works. How do you do that? And so that's when it turns into a real long conversation. Um, the other thing is that we have a, there's a lot of competition. Um, bigger companies um, that are Monsanto, Syngenta, other companies that are out there that are, that are doing huge volumes. And so we've got a watch where these elephants walk and get around them and get to what we need to do in, in ways that we need to do it. Um, and the other thing we're dealing with is we don't have very good functional plant variety protection laws here in Thailand. They're coming, um, and with all respect to the, the Thai system, but we have to work within this system to, to work, work what we need to do and manage this intellectual property issue. Um, so this is a little historical on our business and on our seed production side since 2007. Um, we, we started in 2005. By 2007, we were up to about 400 growers. And four to 500 growers up until 2012. And then you can see on the, the blue line, the last few years, we've really jumped up. I won't go into the details of how all that happened, but a lot of it relates to getting our volumes up and getting profitability. And then the market takes off, and we have to really go. 
The challenge for us really is keeping our yields up as we increase our farmers and increasing our output and switching in new hybrids and that sort of thing. So that little bit over on the right with the, the question mark, you know, that's where we're focusing right now in terms of our seed production scaling up. That's the, the key thing. We can't have that graph keep going down because our unit costs are going to go up and it's going to hit our economics pretty hard. So what we're doing, um, number one, what we've learned is our biggest advantage as a small company is that we can move a lot faster than the big guys. And so that helps us a lot. The other thing is being smaller, um, and again, with all respect to the bigger companies, we maybe have more opportunities to establish more relationships or tighter relationships than, than bigger groups that are trying to operate at much larger scale than us. Um, we put on more staff, um, we're paying growers faster, that's been a really important thing, and we're doing a lot more CSR, corporate social responsibility activities in the communities where we're working. Some of it's really simple, you know, they say they need a new shed for the village square and we build it, we have our meetings there and they're happy to have their thing. All sorts of other things with the schools. Um, we're also, of course, expanding a lot more into other provinces and villages and growers um, and big area that we're trying to work on even more all the time is seed production research um, the planners which I'll talk about in a minute um, and we're giving farmers what they want we have farmers in one area that you know they want this fertilizer another area they want these chemicals or they want you know this growth hormone they think it works we don't think it does but we'll give it to them if they want to try it, whatever they can do to get the yields, and we learn from that. A lot of times they do make these things work. So um, being willing to be flexible and not try to just, you know, we're not trying to make money off these inputs. We're just really trying to be the tools for farmers to get what they need, and we get our seed that we want to sell. The other thing is fitting into local policies. That, I don't know if you're familiar, the Thai government has recently put in a policy, it's a populist policy, but, um, but we've benefited from it. It's been about, they've given farmers credit cards to go out and buy inputs instead of giving it, giving them the inputs. Um, we, at first, were pretty skeptical about this, and but farmers are wanting it, and they're using it, and we're going along for the ride, so we'll see where it goes. Um, actually, it's been a big help for us. We're also collaborating, um, Syngenta Foundation, uh, Clive Murray is here today. Um, they're doing some great work on all kinds of things. I'm sure he'll be talking more later, but they have a program, a software program called FarmForce. It's cloud-based crop production system with um, mobile phones and GPS and all this stuff. It's great. And so we're looking to get that in place. Um, we're also planning our, to expand this and take this out into a couple of other countries as we go forward. Um, on the planning side, which is the key area that I'm focusing on, conventional planning in the dry season, they'll go into a rice paddy um, after the rice is off and um, take a stick, plug the hole, drop the seed, cover it up, and flood it. And some farmers are, have adapted some wheels with little things to do the plugging instead of having to make every hole. This is the conventional way, and this is still where a lot of our seed production, how it's being planted now. But what we've been trying to do is to introduce more mechanized planters. Um, the ones on the left are time made, they're pretty good local plate planter, but what we've done is brought in some uh, precision planters. They're actually 12 row, 16 row or bigger uh, planters from the United States, but they can come in from other places. And they're um, either obsolete or they need reconditioning. We take the individual row units off and recondition them and make them like new and turn them into one row or two row planters here. And bottom line, what we've seen is about a 30-40% yield increase over this local machine uh, just because of the planter. No input, uh, fertilizer, other impacts. And most of it's, you know, it's like your clothes. You know, handmade clothes and hand-sewn clothes look really great, but nobody can stitch a thread like a machine can. And it's a similar thing with these planters. They get it at the right depth, uh, the, this fertilizer is placed right, each seed singulated. And um, our seed growers have been thrilled with these. Um, and we've been providing more and they're doing a great job. 
We're also collaborating back with Syngenta on these, um, where they're starting to introduce these more for sweet corn commercial production. And so the collaboration side is a big area here with this one. But um, this kind of mechanization is, in my mind, going to have to come. Uh, tractors are coming more, so more farmers are able to do this, or custom operators are able to pick these up. But the, the yield drivers, the economics of it, it just totally makes sense. So, lessons learned, um, learning never stops. You know, you think you know this lesson, but you just don't realize until the second thing hits you that, wow, we just learned a whole bunch of stuff from some really smart small farmers that have a fourth grade education. They're basically showing us how to adapt a lot of this technology and keeping our ears and eyes and our hearts open to these guys and how they implement a lot of this stuff is really important for us in our seed production side. Um, the other thing is it just keeps coming over and over. It's really about the people, the staff that we have and how they relate. We had a visitor come into one of our seed production areas and this, this guy said, you know, how do you keep track of all of these farmers? And he said, our, seed, our staff said, we don't keep track of the farmers. We know his wife, his kids, and his dogs. I mean, that's, that's how we, we build our relationships. Um, they're kind of like upside down salesmen. They're there to make relationships with the farmers and keep our long-term relationships there so that we can come back to these farmers on a contractual basis, season after season after season. And that helps us secure our area, be competitive with our big competitors, and, and get these yields up. Um, the big thing is also doing what we say we're going to do. Um, we tell farmers in our contracts we pay within 15 days, we try to pay within 10. Um, the faster we pay, they're like, wow, you know, you guys paid. And we're getting farmers, even though they can maybe make more money from bigger competitors in terms of total income, they may pay higher prices, but they like to work with us because we pay quicker. Um, and some growers, that there's always growers that fail. Um, and these guys just appreciate it so much. They fail because of weather. They fail because they screwed up. We have farmers <laughs> that go off to weddings and they leave their seed crops behind, and we, you know, we help them out. And that goes a long ways. Um, and they'll come back and grow again. The other side, though, is being tough. We have growers that cheat. We have growers that, you know, steal seed or they do whatever, and and we cut and run. We we're out of there. We fulfill our obligations and we leave. And so it's. It's a little bit of tough love in this thing too. And it, the other thing we're learning is that, back to that graph, it's not that hard to scale up, but keeping your efficiency and the relationships and keeping it all together as you scale up is, is the hard part. And the big lesson is, you know, success in scaling up, it's a journey, it's not a destination. You know, we're, we're ongoing, we're, we're sustainable. So this is a picture of some kids over in, uh, in Myanmar, and their parents were buying our seed, and these kids were using our bags for, for their school books. That's how badly they need school bags. So anyway, so if you want to get more information about our company, you can go to our website. I'm happy to talk with you more. Unfortunately, I have to leave today about one, but um, email or, or catch me here. Thank you. To learn more about scaling and how you can contribute to this growing body of knowledge, please visit agrilinks.org slash scaling.